Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you're already subscribed. I'm afraid today's video is another scandal video. It's quite recent news really, so we don't know huge amounts, we don't know huge amounts of detail. But it actually involves Utrecht Hospital in Essex. That is an inpatient unit where they uh, are, well they're actually able to hold up to 10 adult female patients. At the time the scandal broke they were holding 8. Um, they are supposed to care for women, adult women, who have either mental health issues, autism, learning difficulties, who need extra care basically. Um, there's not, we don't know huge amounts at the moment, we don't know the culprits, we haven't seen any of the CCTV footage, none of that has been released, but it has been reported to the police and 10 members of staff have been suspended. Now, most of what we know really is just from news reports that tell us why staff have been suspended and that the, the case has been referred over to the police. So we won't know too much more really until the CQC inquiries finished and the police inquiry is finished and whether any prosecutions are made and, and, and such and then we may find out a little bit more detail then about what went on. Um, I am going to be looking down quite a lot in this video. These, I will link it all of the, where I got all of the information from down below anyway so as you can take a look for yourselves but um, this is just part of a um, BBC article that came out this week and it's just giving us a basic outline of what happened. It just says, Inspector said CCTV footage recorded at the Yew Trees Hospital in Kirby, Lesoken, Essex, appeared to show episodes of physical and emotional abuse. The details emerged in a Care Quality Commission report after the unit was inspected in July and August. Now, the unannounced inspections were prompted by managers at Signet Healthcare. Signet Healthcare are the owners of... Um, the people who are supposed to be running the care home, so they're basically in charge of the care that's provided, overseen by the CQC, that's the Care Quality Commission, and they are supposed to enforce the rules and procedures that keep everybody safe and prevent this kind of thing from happening. Um, The CQC reviewed 21 separate pieces of footage, concluding that 40% included examples of inappropriate staff behaviour. People who lived there were subjected not only to poor care but to abuse, a CQC spokesman said. Workers are captured physically and emotionally abusing a patient and failing to use appropriate restraint techniques. It identified negative interactions where staff visibly became angry with patients and two cases where staff dragged patients across the floor. We witnessed abusive, disrespectful, intimidating, aggressive and inappropriate behaviour. Suspended workers include people who we believe witnessed the alleged incidents and failed to report them. Now, I've just got to just stop there because this is the, the part that really gets to me and that I really, really don't understand. So, some people have been suspended because they basically were present at the time when these things happened and didn't say anything. I just don't get, I don't, what's the matter with people? I don't, I literally do not understand that. I mean, really, if I'm really honest, I think you, you should intervene and put a stop to it there and then unless you're in fear of your life. I can't imagine just walking past that and just being, oh yeah, somebody being somebody being beaten up, no that's absolutely cracking, I'll just crack on with what I'm doing, it, it, that just absolutely blows my mind and I do think that they are as guilty, because if they, if, if they did, if they, if they've seen something like that and not reported it, they're as good as condemning it really, they're basically saying it's okay, because you would, you just wouldn't, I just can't, I can't imagine what would make you put up with that, what would make you think that was okay. I don't get that at all. And also when you think back, for example, with the Winterbourne scandal, there were actually proven cases of abuse there from 2008 onwards. And, you know, 
really and both of both of the but more recent scandals there were whistleblowers who were ignored and that's that's on the CQC that's absolutely appalling it, they're not doing their jobs they're not achieving what they're supposed to be achieving but I don't even think thinking that you won't be believed or anything really would stop me from reporting that or, or putting a stop to it there and then and just saying what on earth do you think you're doing that's not what I'd say but I'm going to keep it clean mind mind blown mind absolutely blown anyway um it says cqc's mental health lead to the failure of some staff to raise the alarm perpetuated abuse and allowed a culture of cruel care to become established great um Any enforcement action we may take will be published as soon as legal restrictions allow. Now, I think that means that, that they need to know who's being prosecuted and what for before they can reveal anyone's identity or indeed like the crimes committed, I suppose, really. Apologies. So a spokeswoman for Signet Healthcare told the BBC, that's, that's the article that I've been reading from so far, Signet has a zero tolerance approach to any kind of abuse, which is why the well established policies and processes we have in place to safeguard people in our care were backed up by the use of closed circuit TV at U Trees. Now, that's, that's a great statement and it sounds really good until you realise that, in actual fact, Thor's Park in Brightlingsea closed in June 2020 after it was rated inadequate by inspectors. Hospital managers were investigating 27 members of staff and found poor employment screening among clinical support workers. Now, when we're talking about employment screening, I do often think that when I see these reports and when things like this explode and come out in the press, I just think like, where do they find these people because it's one thing to have an abuser and yeah absolutely an abuser will uh, try to get gain employment somewhere with vulnerable people who can't defend themselves or, or stand up for themselves the others the people around them even if they've entered this environment where it's normalized and people think it's like everybody else seems to think it's okay I don't, I, I hope, I don't know one person who would walk into that kind of environment and think that that was okay. Um, but that does sort of show a little bit of a theme here with Signet, it does make you wonder. Um, now the published report by the CQC rates Signet yew trees as inadequate. We identified the following areas of concern. Some staff did not protect patients from abuse and improper treatment. We reviewed CCTV footage, which showed staff physically and emotionally abusing a patient. Staff who witnessed the incident did not raise or report their concerns to anyone at the hospital. We reviewed 20 further episodes of CCTV footage saved between May 2020 and July 2020 which we requested from the hospital. Out of these 20 episodes, we identified eight, which is 40% examples of inappropriate staff behavior, including physical and emotional abuse. No staff reported or raised concerns about this practice. Staff did not recognize when an incident a seclusion occurred and therefore the patient did not have access to the appropriate reviews and safeguards outlined in the mental health code of practice. I don't reckon they even know what the mental health code of practice is. I've probably never heard of it, to be honest. Um, staff did not record incidents accurately, reviewed the incident records relating to the 20 episodes of CCTV. 45% of the reports did not align with the CCTV footage. That's hardly surprising. Managers failed to assess, monitor and mitigate risks relating to the health, safety and wellbeing of patients at the hospital and failed to improve the service. We continued to identify breaches of regulations that we raised at previous inspections. So, I mean, that pretty much tells me that people knew it was going on and it was allowed to continue until it could be proven. 
which is funny really when you think to yourself that that with with the um other scandals it's kind of a theme where it, even if there's a whistleblower and it goes on for years and years before anybody actually does anything about it um managers had not ensured they took every step to ensure they recruited and continually assessed people with the right skills experience and values to work with a vulnerable patient group managers did not offer regular and robust supervision they did not review specific agenda areas such as safeguarding and whistleblowing staff responsible for recruiting new staff did not always ask all questions at the interview including questions about when to raise concerns scores were not always recorded to demonstrate candidates met the recruitment threshold so they were basically could have been anyone and you could have got, got yourself a job there staff contributed to poor culture in the hospital that increased the risk of harm to patients this includes the abuse and human rights breaches staff did not always report when they witnessed inappropriate behavior of other staff when staff did raise concerns, managers did not act on them and take steps to safeguard patients. So there obviously, there's been some whistleblowing, there's been some concern somewhere along the line and the managers have just thought not really bothered. So they were obvious, they, they, they were obviously well screened when they were employed as well. Uh, in one example where staff raised concerns about practice, there was a delay of 509 days before a safeguarding notification was sent to CQC and action was taken to investigate the concerns. See, to me, oh, I just think that should have been enough for them to just go in and go, right, okay, there's something really wrong here, we're taking everyone out. Staff described issues of team dynamics, relationships and support from managers. Staff used nicknames for each other that gave weight to a poor culture. However, the hospital acted to suspend staff involved in one incident of abuse and improper behaviour. Managers made appropriate referrals to the police, the Nursing and Midwifery Council and the Disclosure and Barring Service. Managers continued to review CCTV footage after the inspection to assess additional staff and their treatment of patients. Managers had taken appropriate steps to support patients who were victims. This included offering psychological support. Managers informed families and carers of the incidents. Now, what that basically means is that they knew, these managers knew, and then shut the door after the horse had bolted. That all, that, all that means basically is that the CQC inquiry made them have a brick and pull out all the stops far far too little too late in my opinion they should be prosecuted as well so the overall summary and rating was inadequate uh, inspection adequate inspection areas safety was inadequate effectiveness was good apparently caring requires improvement response requires improvement and well-led inadequate i think that caring requires a bit more than just some improvement but i must not know as much as they do obviously I just want to touch very quickly back onto the Winterbourne View scandal, which there is, if you, if you don't know about that one, there is an entirely separate video. I'll link it down below so that you can watch that one. It was actually some time ago now, but this is just an article that really, um, I mean, it's an article in, from 2012, so it's from quite some time ago, but it really just highlights like we, we eight years down the line now and just now further along, it just says, um, a call for MPs to act over failure to prevent the latest scandal. So I don't dare say there'll be another such article soon, but unless we really make some noise about it, share it around and let people know exactly what's going on. Because one little article in the BBC that most people have just skipped by and not really taken too much notice of isn't going to cut it. If there's no public pressure to stop this from happening, it'll go on and on and on forever that's that's quite obvious because we still even now this is this is most likely going to turn out to be a very very similar thing probably going to find out very similar allegations very similar practices cruel treatment and what 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 not gone on um and it, it you know 
in my opinion, anywhere that involves vulnerable people, care, anywhere where there is a even tiny possibility that somebody could be taken advantage of, there should be CCTV, and I'm included in that, um, OAP homes, special needs schools, primary schools, any, any, certainly any ATU or mental health hospital and stuff, there should always be CCTV and it should always be reviewed and it's not that I think that in the majority of the cases there is anything untoward going on, I do believe that most people are in that job for the right reasons. I just think at least knowing that there was evidence out there, that they were putting evidence out there, um, maybe it would at least put them off a little bit, knowing that they could possibly be exposed. And I realise, you know, there's expense to it. Certainly at this, this point in time, there's no spare money for anything. I get all of that, but these people, it's, you know, we're not just talking about them like, maybe not getting quite what they're entitled to. We're talking about absolute inhumane treatment here. So this is in 2012 anyway, for after Winterbourne View, um, a call for MPs to act over failure to prevent the latest scandal. So it says, people with learning difficulties have called on MPs to act over fears that the latest report into the brutal institutional abuse of disabled people will again fail to prevent future scandals. Well, no, we know that it did and they were right. They spoke out after the publication of a serious case review into the appalling and systematically brutal abuse that took place at Winterbourne View, a private hospital near Bristol, which provided assessment and treatment services for people with learning difficulties. The SRC is saying that physical assault on patients, the SRC is the serious review. Found that physical assaults on patients by staff dated back to at least 2008, while there were 379 records of staff physically restraining patients in 2010 and 129 in the first three months of 2011, which the SCR described as extraordinarily excessive and dangerous. There was frequent overuse of medication to control patients who lived in circumstances which raised the continuous possibility of harm and degradation. While the authorities failed to release that, absconding patients, the concerns of their relatives request to be removed and escalating self-injurious behaviour were evidence of a failing service. The abuse finally exposed by an investigation by the BBC's Panorama in May 2011 after a reporter secretly recorded patients being assaulted by care staff. Winterbourne View has since been closed by its owner, Castleback. The SCR report by safeguarding expert Margaret Flynn said such hospitals should not exist. That's ATUs. I am 100% inclined to agree with that personally know several people who have been trying, who, who's somebody they care for with autism or some other mental health condition has been um, taken under the Mental Health Act into an ATU. Now usually that will be because of um, it can, be, it can be any number of things, but it, it will always be like an extreme situation be where somebody's been hurt, where they within the current situation, whether it's at home or wherever, there's a, there's a really huge problem and it, it's, it's a danger, they're a danger to themselves or someone else. And a patient can be held under the mental health act. Now, whether any of the patients at Utrecht's hospital were, we don't know yet, it's not really been, they've not revealed much about the patients or the staff just yet um but it's likely and what that basically means is that they are held there and you are no longer in control of, of where they live or, or what they do basically 
I've, I know personally know several people who have been trying to get their child out for some of them in, in excess of 10 years fighting 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 to try and get them out of these terrible places where all this horrible stuff goes on and it's just swept under the carpet and ignored really to be honest instead south gloucestershire council received 40 safeguarding alerts between january 2008 and may 2011 but failed to spot a pattern of criminal abuse like actually being people who need to know are being told and just I don't even know I must think it doesn't matter I don't know patients from Winterbourne View attended a local accident in an emergency department 76 times between the same dates often demonstrating signs of considerable visible physical and quantifiable violence and yet the department failed to raise a single alert with the council we also concluded that social care regulators had proved unequal to the task of uncovering the abuse at Winterbourne View. She said that the low-cost, light-touch approach of the Care Quality Commission, CQC, had not worked and although Carol Sebeck was primarily responsible and accountable for the neglectful and inhumane treatment. So what they're basically saying there really is that the CQC did not do enough. They, weren't. they, they are there to ensure that this kind of thing doesn't happen and if it does it's discovered and stopped. Now Signet Healthcare in their About Us section state Signet Healthcare was originally founded in 1988. Since then we have developed a wide range of services for individuals suffering from a variety of mental health problems. Our values at Signet we genuinely live and breathe our values. We believe they underpin everything we do as a provider of specialist mental health care and as a responsible employer. We have some amazing staff and teams who have been honoured with some incredible awards. Safeguarding is everyone's responsibility for services to be effective. Each person should play their part. This page includes links to Signet safeguarding policies. So that's, I mean, that's really just basically outlining what they should have been doing and weren't. Um, I will update when I find out any more about this particular case because I'm sure we're about to find some absolutely horrifying details out. There's no question there. Um, but yeah, I just felt like, I just feel like, I, I don't like making these videos, but I do think it's very, very important that people are aware, in particular those who don't have any association with autism, mental health or special needs because they really don't, I, I didn't realise this, certainly not to this extent, um, before I was involved with that kind of thing, so I don't, I don't think you'll meet many people who would find that acceptable. So anyway, I'll leave all the links down below for all of the information that I've I've used today to tell you about this this particular one please do give it a share so as it gets out there and people do get to know about it thank you so so much for watching take care speak to you soon bye